Hey guys. As again, gotta fix the camera. Pull it out a little bit. Yeah, that's better. How are you guys doing? Hey Sierra. Hey Shayna. Who else we got on? I don't know about you guys, but it's still hot here. Hot, hot. Hey, Sandy. I think I'm on about my 50th of these. I just can't get enough water right now. Oh, wow. You got a lot done today. I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't at all. I got the sample done for this, and that was it. <laughs> Yeah, I, that's okay, Sandy. I always catch it kind of, this is kind of a bad time for you. So I understand. You can be on and off as you need to, honey. It's all right. Hey, Mary Beth. We got the dog tonight, too. She was feeling pretty left out. She's been upstairs quite a bit this week. I hadn't had her down here with me during the day. So, hey, Anna. Hey, Juana. Hey, Juana, congrats on winning this week. That was so exciting to see your name come across. It was fun that I got to see a couple people. Anna's another one. Congrats, Anna. Both of you girls. I think you were the only two that I knew that I saw. That's exciting. Hey, Adriana. I think you guys are going to love these bonnets tonight. I was so excited when I saw, saw the pattern and I was like, oh my, these are so easy and they're so cute. Hey, Diane. Hey, hey, hey. How's it going, Sandra? I'm sure you'll see Bear Bear here soon. He'll be up making muffins in his usual spot. <laughs> What's he mad at, Howdy girl? What is he mad at? I know there's the kitty, and you know you're not supposed to go over and say hi. The kitty doesn't like that very well, does she? Does he? I know. Poor baby. Hey, Sam. So here we are again, Sunday night, guys. Wow, it just, the weekends just fly. I could swear it's like, woohoo, Friday, and now it's Sunday night already. I had a really good nap though today, so I can't complain. I needed it so bad. I was afraid I was gonna be, you know, one of those groggy when you wake up and you can't come out of it kind of things, and thankfully, no. So, yeah, organizing, I'm in the middle of trying to figure that out. I don't know how many of you have moved and then when you move, you're like, okay, I'm gonna have time and you shove stuff like in a closet and you're like, I just, I'll deal with it, you know, in a month or two. And then it's like years later. Hey, Alicia. So I met that years later, having to deal with a lot of stuff. Plus, I want to rework this um, studio still. I wasn't 100% done with it when I when I started doing all of this back in at Christmas time. So I'm kind of at that point now where it's kind of driving me crazy. And I feel like it's unproductive. Just by the way, I've got some of this stuff organized and I need to reorganize it so it's a little more productive. I'm okay with what's over there. It's more what you guys can't see back here that's making me insane. So, yeah, hopefully really soon I'll get to that. But I started last week and I just kind of got to that. I just don't even know where to start kind of phase. And then my house, too, I wanted to start up there because I don't have a like a ton but it seems like each room has something I want to touch. 
and then one room probably has a little bit more than another. So yeah, I just like, oh, where do you start when you want to do it all, you know? So, hey, Danny. All right, so you want to see what we're going to work on tonight. It's really easy, guys. This is a nice little add to your shop or to a gift. And it's just, it doesn't take up much fabric to do these. And you can make one to match the gift if you made like an outfit, or you can make them a couple of them for, you know, different types of like dress or casual or whatever. But baby bonnets are coming back again. And it's kind of good because you still need to, the baby's head still needs to be covered at times, whether it be for sun or cold or wind or whatever. And they are so cute. And this one, guys, look at this. This is the back. And this is the front. So when you put it on and you tie it, and then that's in the back. And so this can also adjust the size a little bit for the baby. So as their head grows, they can open up this, um, this ribbon if they want to keep wearing it. So super easy, guys. I mean, literally, I made this in probably 15 minutes, maybe 20 if you want to take your time. It's crazy how fast these go. And when they use just 9 by 14 pieces of fabric, those are actually little pieces of fabric. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not too hard. You can get, I know I put in their fat quarters and then you cut down. Well, I think you can probably get, you know, a smaller piece if you want. It was just fat quarters easy to pick up if you're out and about and you see something you really like. So, hey, Mary. Hey, Marissa. So, yeah, and, you know, these are, you can make these look any, you can do these out of fleece if you wanted to as well for like something really warm. And you would probably just lengthen the ribbon a little bit because the fleece might be just a little bit bulkier. But super, super, super easy. And you could even make these an all white for like summer if you wanted just to have like an all white outfit or something. So anyway. So, yeah, and I'm just, I'm making mine, I'm making the next one out of linen. This one is um, cotton on one side, and then this is kind of a rustic fabric that I did on this side. It kind of does in a way, Mary, yeah, it really does. But I think you can change it so it doesn't look like that, depending upon the fabrics that you wear, to, or fabrics that you use, too. But it's so easy so 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 easy and when if you make it like out of a really bright floral for a girl so so cute so um anyway this one's kind of more of a rustic fabric and i thought that would be kind of good for a little boy because it's blue on the inside i mean a little girl could wear this too so yeah just a nice little um nice little unisex one here and this one too is going to be unisex this is two pieces of linen so this will be one side and this will be just plain linen on the other and you can decide whether you know you don't have to decide right when you sit down to sew it which side's going to be the out and which side's going to be the in the time that you decide is when we sew the casing to put the ribbon in that's when you can kind of look at it because you already have these in so you can look at it and go do i want it this way or do i want it this way and then you can decide real quick and i decided i wanted this on the outside at first, I thought this was going to be on the inside. And then when I sewed it up, I looked at it and went, no, no, it's got to be this on the outside. So, They are, Mary. Hey, Michelle. Yeah, true, Mary. You are so right. You are so right. Mm -hmm. And that takes it away from that feel. So if you always do patterns, then you won't have that feel. Mm -hmm. 
And you don't have to be super careful on cutting, guys. I mean, if it's just a tiny bit bigger than the 9 by 14 it's not going to matter. It really isn't. You know, um, this is one of those where 9 by 14 is the size. Don't go any smaller. But if it ends up being 9.5 by 15.5 or 9.5 by 14.5, it's going to be fine. It's going to still fit. You know, to kind of stay in that ballpark on those, because that's the one thing about this hat, I think, um, with all the ties, it's adjustable both down and up pretty good. The only one that I would do if you wanted to wear it longer is it's said to take three lengths of ribbon at 18 inches a piece. I would make this one a little longer if you want to wear it longer. So if you're wanting to loosen it up so that the baby can wear it longer, I would make this probably about four inches longer, maybe. Maybe even longer than that. I'd probably go six. Yeah, I'd probably go six to eight inches longer. So yeah, this one was 18. I'd probably go 24 to 28 inches for the back one. And so what if it has a little ribbon trail for a while? It'd be really cute to have it that way. It is a scrap user. It really is. It's perfect for that. And these are, guys, these are great gifts. Like you have a last minute baby gift. You know how that happens. It's like all of a sudden you get invited or somebody's coming and they have the baby and you didn't even think about a gift all of a sudden. You can whip these up so fast. And if you wanted to, you know, if you go buy a baby gift that you wanted something a little more personal, you could do that. Um, if you really wanted to, you could make it out of all plain fabrics and do an embroidery on it too. And it'd be really pretty. So there's, yes, embroider something small inside of it, Mary, exactly. So there's so much you can do. Oh, I'm glad you joined us, Alicia. Yeah, today was another one of those days where it's like, I don't know how many people are busy with family. So, yeah, I understand if you guys can only stay for a few minutes. This is going to be a really fast one, too, fast projects. So um, if people have to go earlier than usual, that's fine. We could, you know, if we have to. Oh, very cool, Marissa. Very cool, Alicia. Yeah, there's always lots of things coming, coming out anymore, all of our opportunities. Yeah, I, I didn't have anything going on today. So, and I know most people probably celebrated yesterday just because of Saturday and then Sunday. Sundays tend to get a little busy and, you know, there's, there's those that still had like lunch and that. So, yeah, evening time can be a little quieter. All right, so let's get going on this here. So I have my two pieces that are 9 by 14. And I'm going to want to lay, if you have um, a print, you're going to want to put the print down so you want your face sides together got a piece of fuzz i'm trying to get off there there we go so face sides together so that you have and see so you can tell my i didn't do such a great cut job i actually left my selvage on one side because i knew i was going to be surging it and it'll cut it off so i just didn't even cut that Oh, good, Sandy. Thank you. That makes my day. Thank you for telling me that. Oh, speaking of Danny, I got a text from my cousin just right before this. She's expecting in December. It was cute. They sent out a picture of her and her husband, and she's standing there, and she just got a little BB bump, and she's got a dress, and he's got his hand on her belly, and then you said, happy Father's Day to all the dads and dads-to-be, and I was like, you're expecting, so that was pretty exciting news. I've been expecting to get that news fairly soon. They've been married for about, I think this was their two-year anniversary this year, so I wasn't totally surprised, but oh, 
Yeah, they've been keeping the secret just long enough. She's due in December. So just far enough along, that's placed her. I figured by the picture she was about four months, and that's kind of what I think it comes out to be. So, yeah, exciting. All right, so anyway, what I'm going to do is we're going to so we're going to surge or sew. You can do either one. So I'm going to surge, but if you only have a sewing machine, you can just sew. It's an inside seam, so you can do just a regular stitch seam, or if you want to do a stitch and then a zigzag to uh, um, just kind of give it a little more stability, you can do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and surge this. I'm just looking at making sure I remember what I did here five minutes ago. <laughs> and of course, the cat is like right there. He loves to be right up on me when I'm just standing at this table. He'll just lay right by my feet and almost touch me. So I can remember he's down there. <laughs> leaning against me right now. It's like I start sewing and then I feel this boop. <laughs> okay, so you surge the long edge. Doesn't matter which one, just make sure that you have your right sides together so that the wrong sides are out. So here's my right sides, okay? Um, okay, so Mary Beth, if you're using directional fabric, the long way is here. Okay, so depending upon the direction that your fabric is and the way maybe your pattern is laying, just realize the long edge is what goes around their face. So that'll help you place it. <laughs> I understand that, Mary. I've got one of those too. Okay, so now you've taken care of surging or sewing, okay? You got that in there. So we're gonna open up the fabric and you're gonna lay one of your straps all the way across and you're going to then put it on the edge here. Let me move this over just a little bit. So we're going to be sewing over here, okay? So I just bump it right up against that seam. And then I close it. And we're going to be surging this side to catch that edge of that ribbon. So you've got, I've got the long edge hanging out here. We're not sewing this side, we're sewing this side, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and surge that next. Okay, so it looks like this. So you don't see my edge because my ribbon that I caught is right there. And then this one is sticking out over here. So now we're going to do the same thing on the other side, except this side's already sewn. So you're going to take this edge and pull it so it's down here so you don't get it caught. See, here's, my, here's where I sewed it, and it's kind of laying 90 degrees. We're going to take the other one, and you're going to lay it in there on the edge so you can sew it in, but you're going to have to turn this one. We can't lay this one straight. So you take your time, open your fabric up the best you can on this side, lay it down nice and flat, lay your ribbon nice and flat, and make sure you catch it in the edge there, and then turn it 90 degrees. So I lay it again up against the edge of my seam like I did with the other one, so that I know it's nice and straight. 
and then I just turn it after it's gone, you know, about halfway or so. And then I turn it so the rest of it goes down so I don't, you know, you're not fighting with it. Now we're going to lay this flat on top so that we can sew down this side. Make sure you go ahead and flatten everything back out again so that everything's laying nice. When you pick it up, make sure you hang on to here where your ribbon's at so that it doesn't move. So we're trying to make sure that gets sewn in straight. And go ahead and start. Here's the other end. All right. Oh, buddy, I'm sorry. Sorry, buddy. I know I caught your tail just a little bit, didn't I? Okay, so now, since I'm serging, I always like to tie these ends. Just kind of a little extra assurance that they're not going to come undone. Yeah, quarter inch seam allowance, Mary. You know, it, it's uh, when you're surging, my surging is actually, yeah, my surge is at a quarter. So, yeah, quarter inch seam allowance on that. All right, now I've tied my ends. And I'm going to turn it inside out. Hey, Evelyn. Okay, so make you make sure your corners are nice and pushed out. So if they're not 100%, like when you pull on this ribbon a little bit, if you just need to get something in there to poke it a little bit more, just kind of help pull it out. Do that. Get those as square as you can. All right. Now, this is the part where you just go and we're going to iron these seams really nice. Okay. So I will be right back while I go do that. Hi, Yvette. Okay, so now it's perfectly ironed, so it's good and flat. And what I want to do now is I'm going to serge this final edge shut, or you're going to sew it either way. But make sure this is a nice finish because this is going to show, not on the outside, but it will show on the inside of the garment. So we're sewing this edge right here. So I'm going to serge mine, but if you guys just have um, a sewing machine, you can zigzag it or you could do a real nice overcast stitch on there. Evelyn, we're making little bonnets and they're kind of a scrap buster, super easy. They take about 20 minutes to make. So you just need some ribbon and two pieces of fabric, nine by 14. And I was, while well, I was just over at the iron thinking, you know guys, those um, vintage 
hankies that you can get sometimes. These would be adorable if you wanted to make a vintage looking one of these and use those hankies on the outside and maybe just do like a off white or off white cotton or linen on the inside. That would be super sweet. Again, I'm going to go ahead and since this is the serger, I'm going to tie these ends, try and be a little neater about them, and then I'm going to try and tuck them when I turn this casing. And I'm going to show you a little trick as well, but not on this part. It's for the putting the ribbon in. Okay, when I tuck, so I'll tie the end here. But when I go to tuck, I don't want to cut this really close to that knot. So I'm probably just going to cut it like right about there. So there's about an inch or so left so that I can pull it into that seam. Hey, Jazz. All right, so now I have to decide which way do I want out. So this is how we can decide. So you've already got this done. So just take it and kind of hold it up. And do I like it like this with the linen on the outside? Or do I like it like this with the print on the outside and the linen on the inside? Which way do you guys like it? Here's the linen on the outside and the print on the inside. Print on the outside. And the linen on the inside. Shana votes print outside. I'm a, I think I'm with you, Shana. I'm going to do the print on the outside. Okay, so here is the little trick, guys. So you have your last piece of uh, ribbon. And you have to make a casing. So you have to turn this. And the ribbon goes on the inside. So when we make the casing, we turn this and we'll take it over to the iron and we'll iron it. And then you will, you can, you can um, pin this if you want, guys, too. So I'm not going to, but don't feel like you can't pin it. Absolutely, you can pin this. I know just this is linen, and when I go iron it, it's going to iron it crisp, and I'm going to be okay. So what I do is I take my ribbon, and I lay it on the inside. And then that way, when I do the casing, my ribbon stops right before that surged edge there. So I know my casing's the right size and when I go print it, or go print it, when I go iron it, I'm gonna leave the ribbon in there. And then that way I know I didn't screw it up when I go to iron it so that it'll be the right size. And then I'm gonna leave it in there still while I stitch. Now, if you do it so that it's like this, you won't catch your ribbon because you're gonna stitch over here, not over there. So it's, you're going to miss it by a good eighth to almost a quarter of an inch, and you're going to be fine. And then you don't have to go and try and thread the ribbon through later. It's already in there. Oh, good. Everybody's liking the print on the outside. Okay, cool. All right, so I will be back. I'm just going to real quick, like, give this a press.
So by pressing it now, you can see that I've got this edge here to completely sew it across. So I'm going to go over to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew this up real fast. And don't forget to lock this seam down. So back forward, back forward. When at the front end, at the at the uh, end. Just a little reminder for you guys. So now, keep moving. We now have it like this. So what you're gonna do? Hey, Lottie. Oh, Father's a cake, Anna. Where's my piece? <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this now, and you're going to gather it on both sides. And just gather it up as far as you want it to go. And I try and gather mine pretty tight to begin with and keep your ribbon as even as you can. Because sometimes you don't have any pull, it might move just a little bit. And you just tie one to hold it. So I've got it pretty well tight there. And then just tie a bow. And you probably, if you're like me, you'll have to mess with that bow a few times. All right, so we're almost done. We got to deal with the edges of the ribbon now. I know, I wish you could too, Anna. I love cake, and it's like I don't get cake that often because. Well, it's just me. <laughs> I'm not going to go make a cake just for me. So, yeah, Alicia, um, they were that fast. <laughs> that I mean, literally, you guys, when you make one, your next one's going to take you probably, if you have everything cut out, you can do this in like five, ten minutes. After you've made your first one and you know what you're doing, and you're like, oh, is that it? Then you're done. Five, ten minutes. And if you really wanted to, you could. And I probably would suggest doing this. Is tack right here. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do it on my machine, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Because these are gonna always get pulled on, and it just gives it a little bit more reinforcement. So let me do that first, and then I'll show you guys what we're gonna do with the ends here. Thank you. 
Okay, so I just did the one. My machine decided to unthread itself, and I'm not going to mess with it. That you guys will know what I'm talking about here. Okay, so let me show you. If you can see right here, all I did was I just sewed across and back, and then I stabilized my stitch by going back and forth like once. And what it does is it reinforces this from pulling. And, and coming out. So I would do that on both of them, both sides. And then that way you've got those reinforced. Oh, good idea, Evelyn. Nothing about that. That's a great idea. But then I also know it's in the, in the, in the freezer. <laughs> that may be bad. <laughs> Yeah, she might surprise you, Mary. Yeah, give it a shot. You know, um, once she realizes it keeps even the bugs out of her ears, because up north, you know how you can get the gnats or you can get the mosquitoes. This would keep that off of them, too. So, Oh, that'll be cute, Mary Beth. Super, super cute. Yeah, you guys can get super creative with these. Okay, so what I'm going to do with my ends, and there's a lot of things you can do with the ends, but the easiest way is I just use, you can use either Fray Chip or Fabric Fusion. And I just run, and I hope it's open, because my thing is not, the top is not wanting to sit on there, so it must have dried just a little bit. Okay, so let's do that. So I've got some on my finger. And what I do is just run it along the edge really good like that just to give it a good coating. You guys can see that or not. Come on. So it just creates like a, a seal and it'll take a little bit to dry. So just make sure you set it off to the side and don't let it get on any fabric because it, if you get it on some fabric, it will show just a tiny bit. It's not real bad, but you will notice it. But I make sure everything is good and sealed when I do this. So I just sit and it's probably easiest to do it with your fingers like I'm doing. So that way, you know, you get it everywhere. And then you're going to want to do it on this, these as well. And you could do this ahead of time too. You don't have to do it afterwards. So just let them dry really good. But this stuff washes, won't come off. It's you won't get this off. So that's why I love this fabric fusion. I use it for a lot of things. Um, even if I'm having, this is kind of like my my little. Uh, fix for a lot of things. If I'm having issues with something and it's just not working, or if I accidentally did something and it's not really going to show if I fix it with that and then keep going. I mean, this is just kind of like my little secret and we all we need to have those little secrets. So Yep, simple add-on to make more money on Etsy. Absolutely. You can sell these as like part of a set. You know, maybe you have like the cute little, remember we made the little um, peasant dresses or the little bubble rompers, and you could make one of these to go with. Yeah, it is super fast. That's what I was saying, Evelyn. If you get one of those last minute shower invitations or you found out somebody's all of a sudden coming into town at the last minute and you need the baby gift and you weren't quite ready, you know, you could easily go and buy something and then make one or two of these to go with it. Um, the ties, Mary, the ties are 18 inches long. Now, the back tie, that's where I was saying I don't know, that's kind of a tight measurement because even when I get done, there isn't much of a length left on there. So I might make that longer. 
So the pattern I was following had three of these at 18. I would probably tend to make these more closer to 24 and then go from there. But if you like them short, I mean, you could always make them 24 and then cut them back if you want them shorter. And these ties, guys, <laughs> you're going to die. Okay, so I bought a whole bunch of things from Tuesday morning. Um, they were, uh, I think they were the aprons that I used for my blanks. These were one continuous tie. Came like this, tied around the package. Well, I saved them because I'm like, these are, this is really cool ribbon and it's really nice ribbon and I know I'll use it. And then when I started to go to make these for today, I was like, Ooh, this is rustic and everything I'm doing with linen and everything that would look really good with it. So just kind of, um, just kind of look for stuff like this too. Sometimes you get really cool things because I'm sure to go buy this ribbon, it wouldn't be cheap for us. Now I'm sure for the company that was using it, they probably buy it by bulk, so it probably doesn't cost them anything to get it. But for me to go buy stuff like this, this is really nice ribbon. Hey, Faye. So, yeah, it does. It looks really good with this linen. Now, if I was to go do it with cotton, it would not look good with the cotton. So I would have to use something different. But, yeah, with these little rustic things that I've got going on, yeah, it looks really awesome with it. Oh my goodness, no way, Sierra. There is no way. Fireworks and your baby's trying to sleep. <laughs> That's not good. All right, Faye, this is what we did. These are our baby hats, baby bonnets that we did. Super fast, Faye. Literally by the time, probably takes you as long to cut them out as it takes you to sew them or vice versa. So super, super quick. I'm going to keep doing these. Yeah, I'm dreading 4th of July here. People go crazy here because they can come out and shoot fireworks. Big, big fireworks out here because there's no, there's no rules. My dog is going to go nuts. So I see it being a very heavy Benadryl night for the poor thing, just to keep her calm. Last year, I spent the day, the evening down here in the studio with her, and I was cranking the music because I figured it's a little quieter down here than it would be up in the house, and she was still freaking out. So I don't know. Oh, you guys are only a couple days off from us then, Faye. You're the 1st of July and ours is the 4th of July. Get enough on my fingers. have to go watch that Danny I saw that you posted one and I haven't had a chance to go watch it and everybody's raving about it so I'm excited I gotta catch up on that stuff this week I'm hoping my day job is going to be just a little quieter now I looked at my schedule for the week just if nothing else for conference calls and I hope I don't jinx myself by saying this but I only have three and that's really unusual Usually, I'm excited if I only have three a day, and I've got only three all week. And I'm just like, I'm on vacation. <laughs> I wish. Oh, I wish I was on vacation.
Yeah, I hear you, Anna and Faye. I'll be hearing the fireworks probably starting next weekend. And they'll go for probably almost two weeks here. It'll just be nuts. It'll be every night. And the thing that gets me is it's my neighbor right just right over behind me. He buys the big, big, big ones. And he shoots them off every night. I mean, it's like, oh, my goodness. Seriously, buddy? How much money do you spend on those? It's crazy. And I feel bad. We've got a lot of uh, wildlife out here. And right now, a lot of baby deer are just being born. And they're going to be just terrified. Firework party. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it is a firework party out here, that's for sure. Hey, Nancy. I saw you a lot on the uh, SMP this week. It was a fun week, wasn't it? Um, where about am I? I'm in Texas, Michelle. I'm in south, uh, southern central Texas between San Antonio and Austin. Yeah, Mary, let me know how they fit, too. I'm curious size-wise, since your girls are just a little bit bigger than a baby. So um, if you make one and it doesn't quite fit, then just upsize the 9 by 14 just to maybe, um, you know, maybe 12 by 18 or something and see, or just kind of experiment with the size because it'd be real easy to make these bigger for the bigger kids too, you know, for, cause these are truly for babies. So yeah, for, you know, little kids even be really cute to have these. I would think a 12 by 18 would be a good size. 12 by 18 or even 12 by 16. Cause these are nine by 14. Yeah, Anna, I know. And my uh, my small town up here, I can go for two blocks and there is probably two firework stands and a permanent firework store, I guess. I've never been in it, but it's permanent and it has the signs up all year round. And then they we're, we're able to shoot them off quite a bit down here just because um, there is no laws where I'm at that I, I'm away from a bigger town just by like 15, 20 miles. And so we have nothing governing us up here and everybody comes up here to buy and shoot them off. Oh my gosh. And then you just keep going down the road and these fireworks stand after fireworks stand after fireworks stand for several weeks. It's crazy. And we can shoot them off at Christmas, New Year's, 4th of July. I think there's one other time that they seem to open up and it seemed kind of a kind of seemed like a weird time. I noticed last year they opened up. I don't know if it was Labor Day or something like that. It was really odd. Yeah, these will be really cute to sell, guys. These would be super, super sweet to sell. And yeah, as like I was saying, you can use up your, your stash and your stash of your ribbon, your stash of your fabric and just sell them as, you know, you've got one, that's it. That's the only one you got guys, you know, and don't worry about trying to take orders, just make them. Yeah. The problem with that, Michelle, because that's the way we used to do it in Nebraska, we could go down to this town in Missouri and buy. They had a huge stand because it was legal there. A lot of them were legal in Nebraska. Nothing was legal. And people would get busted crossing the border. The cops would sit there and wait and watch for people leaving those areas. 
And then as soon as they crossed the border, they'd bust them. So yeah, it was crazy. And I used to have to drive down to that city for work quite a bit. And I'd watch I, and as soon as 4th of July got there, man, they weren't kidding. The cops were thick at the border. Yeah, you can see some awesome shows, though, and that's just it. Aw, Faye. Thank you. <laughs> that's all right. I'm glad I'm giving you baby fever. It's all good. We're having a little baby boom around here as it is anyway. I know a lot of people that are having babies, so... I think I've got a couple of hats for some people. <laughs> yeah, and they think that's very common, Wana. Everybody crosses borders and just, you know, if they want them, they're going to go get them. That's just that. So I just, I go sit out on my deck and I'll watch them. And I do, I mean, I literally, I actually probably don't want to go out on my deck because I can't see because of the roof. I'll have to go out on my deck down here and sit. And then I can see the open sky because literally they're just practically over my house because of this guy right here. And then I can see in the distance, they just go absolutely nuts. And I could be out there for two hours, probably with mosquitoes. So I have to definitely, um, lather myself up because they find me from a I swear a planet away they will find me they will need five of those baby bonnets oh my gosh she's dreaming guys she's She barks in her sleep. It's so cute. Yeah. Yep, Michelle. And if you needed to, if you try one on and it doesn't seem like it goes far enough forward, you could always make them, you know, just a little bit wider too, you know, like an inch wider, make them 10 inches instead of nine. And then you would definitely have kind of that brim thing going on. Yeah, Nancy, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Faye. <laughs> yeah, she makes me laugh. She, every time she goes to sleep, she dreams. And she dreams hard. I mean, her whole body twitches. And she'll just start. She'll bark in her sleep. But she doesn't open her mouth. And so it's kind of like this muffled bark. And then her lips and her cheeks puff out. It's so cute. And her eyes go crazy. And her ears wiggle. And, <laughs> and it's hard to tell she's asleep sometimes. Because like right now, she's got her eyes just a little bit open. And you can't tell if she's in, you know, just kind of half out or not. And then when she starts doing that, then I know she's gone. <laughs> I could see these even being made like for like wintertime out of corduroy. And then you got a nice, nice big heavy ribbon or you make them out of velvet for the girls and then put the big pretty ribbon on there, the big satin ribbon, you know, kind of almost the Victorian feel to it. You could put a ruffle on the front. Absolutely. Yeah, you could you could definitely put a ruffle right here if you wanted to. And that would give the girl a little more brim. The only thing that I think it would kind of tend to do if you're real, if you get it in and if you want this look, that's great. But if you don't, that's why I'm saying this. Watch your fabric if you do the ruffle, because you almost could look like a um, little house in the prairie kind of thing going on here. So, yeah, just. Um, just pay attention to that because I know that was kind of a thing. They would have that ruffle right there. Now, granted, they had a little more going on down here, too. But, yeah, ruffle would be super sweet. Yeah, that's hard to explain, Michelle. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
faux fur on one side and satin on the other. There you go. See, these you can do any weather, light to heavy, you know, and just make them good for any time of the year. Lace on the front. Mm -hmm. Oh, Michelle, you've got a busy house, or Nancy, you've got a busy house. Very busy house. That's good, though. That is so good. Two more for you, Faye. Faye's got baby fever. <laughs> She's trying to have other people have babies, so she does it. Hey, Faye, your daughter was so cute. You posted that on Discord with her taekwondo. That oh, She was pretty, pretty girl. I haven't seen your kids yet, so... <laughs> hey, you are bad. <sighs> Whatever did I whip up? Did I whip up today? Are you talking about the uh, bonnets, Shana? Did you, you miss those? We got, so this is the one. What else did I whip up today? Got you. I whipped up a nap today. That's what I nipped up, whipped up. I could not. It was one of those days where I was just like, I can't do anything before a nap or without a nap. And I ended up taking a two hour nap. I thought it was just going to be, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. I woke up two hours later. I, that's how bad I needed the nap. So I got up and kind of it was probably two and a half hours before this. And I knew I still had to make the, this one, but I was like, Oh, it's not going to take that long. So I just kind of took my time and lounged and cuddled with her over there and came on down here and kind of pulled it all together. And here we are. <laughs> so lost my day. <laughs> yeah. It'll be more this week. I'll get some stuff done. Yeah, I got a lot of her. Yeah, I did that. And I just kind of, I was feeling really overwhelmed today, just in general, not by anything. I just, it gets that way sometimes for me. And I know a lot of it is just work. My day job has been never ending. And yeah, I needed sleep. So I think it was just one of those, yeah, I'm just going to give it up and call it a day. And I knew I was going to do these tonight. So I feel like I got something done. <laughs> Danny, we're trying to give you the baby juju. Got all kinds of videos you can go back and, and watch if you need baby juju. <laughs> Now if that uh, pattern showed anything else I need to tell you guys about, I don't think so. It was pretty simple. So according to the pattern, this is truly for a baby. Um, three to 12 months is what they're saying. So yeah, I would definitely upsize it if you are wanting for, you know, 12 to 24 and then maybe two, three and four. So definitely start adding a couple of inches. And um, if you've got the child, you can try it on. Then you just kind of figure it out from there. They didn't give any measurements past that. But I, like I said, 12 by 18 probably would be a good start. Michelle. <laughs> Oh, yeah, true. Faye, hmm. be careful there. Yeah, Faye, Faye yeah, definitely uh, sent her juju to Ediani. <laughs> oh, 
you guys. My biggest thing, Danny, is I, I've got a lot of stuff I need to take pictures of. A lot. And I just need, that's what I need to concentrate on this week. Rather than whipping some more stuff up, I need to take pictures and get things added. Because I probably, between my two shops, I've probably got 20 to 30 listings I need to do. So, and it just kind of keeps eating at me. I was like, ah, oh, you just need to do that. Yeah, so Michelle, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Hey, Sarah, you're okay. You're all right, Sarah. We're just chatting. The project tonight was super fast, Sarah, so this is kind of a chat night too. It was one of those projects, Sarah, where, you know, we just had, I just had to do it. It was so cute and fast is good. Hey, Pia, fast is good sometimes, you know, for those little quick little gifts and projects and ads and that kind of stuff. So been thinking about you, Pia. I was going to check in on you because I hadn't seen you for a little while. So I'm glad you dropped in. Yeah, if I had the pictures... Sarah, I'd be good. It's just, ugh, trying to take pictures is just killing me. And, and if I just set it up and do it all at once, then I'm good. You know, I'll just whip them all out. But, oh, my. I'm, I'm, my motivation has been real bad lately, and I think it's just that overwhelming thing that I've been feeling. Oh, I feel you, Pia. I've been I've been working like crazy too lately. And you know something you guys could do with these as well. Now that you're talking about that, Michelle, is this could be another one of those um, things you could make out of a special shirt from like Grandpa or Grandma. And it meant something to maybe the parents or, or whatever. That would be really sweet. And when they get done and if these don't fit anymore, they can still use them as a decoration. And they just tie a knot and hang them like on a peg on the wall or on like a longer, oh, like three peg kind of thing. And you could just hang them. And so if they're made out of something that matters, like a shirt that meant something, then it becomes a little decoration too. So that would be really cute. Oh, those are so sweet too, Sarah. Oh, you did. Pia, we need to talk about this. Let's, let's chat later about that. Put potpourri in them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Nancy, that's exactly how you do it. You know, the first listing you do for each, if you make multiples of each one just in different fabrics or whatever, yeah, the first one's the hardest one. And then, yeah, use copy and paste and then change a few of the words, change a few of the tags, put it up. And those go super quick. Yes, it would be cute like that, wouldn't it, Sarah? That's okay, Danny. Um, again, it just saves you a little bit of time. A lot of your uh, verbiage is going to be the same on the description. And then you can just go in and change the parts that aren't a part of it instead of having to constantly retype everything. Oh, that's okay, Sarah. We know you're there. We know you're there. I'm glad you're working. I'm glad you're sketching. Coming up with something else. And I'm going to hit you with another question. Did you get your fabric? Is it coming yet? I know it's been flower. Can take a couple weeks just because they get so many orders. They can get picked up pretty easily. 
Oh, and then I read Spoonflower got bought out. They're not changing according to the email. They got bought out by, I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I just got the email like about a week or so ago. Yep, definitely, Michelle. Yeah, you can do that too, Nancy. Yep, do your Word documents. Do it all up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool, Sarah. Yay. How exciting. You're just getting started, girl. And we're all watching you. It's so fun to watch you take off with this. I can't wait for my sublimation printer to get here. It's on back order though, so I don't know how long I'm gonna be waiting. My brain is starting to see my tags that I wanna make and everything. And I just ran across my ribbon that I wanna to use to make my tags with. I just found it. So I saw that and I went, oh, there's that. <laughs> Um, Cifei, I haven't yet, just in case they, they haven't charged my card yet because it's on back order. So what I think they're doing is, and a lot of companies will do this when something's on back order, they wait until they know they've got the product and they're shipping it and then they charge your card. And I'm like, if I start doing that, then all of a sudden I'm going to get this email from them going, sorry, we can't fulfill your order. We feel bad. And then I'm going to be like, now I have all these supplies. I mean, most of them wouldn't matter. They would transfer to another sublimation printer. So I probably could just go ahead and get it regardless. But I'm just like, I don't want to jinx myself. But yeah, I, if I end up having to get a different one, I'm a little worried that I might change my mind on some of those supplies. So I haven't yet. Plus then the supplies will taunt me. They'll just sit there and mock me the whole time and stare at me and yeah. Yeah, I'm sure Amber's excited, Sarah. I'm sure. I know she was uh, kind of mentioning that the other day, so I know she's excited. Oh! Hang on, I gotta see this. Mary Scott was making the bonnet with me, and she just sent me a message, and I want to see it. I want to see it. I think I'm in the wrong shop here. I've got to change accounts. Oh, there it is. Oh, it is so cute. It's the sharks with the uh, plaid. Oh, it turned out super cute. And I like the longer tail in the back. Now, guys, she made her, um, her own ties. Can I show this, Mary? Mary, can I show you, can I show this to everybody? This turned out really, really cute. Okay. So, you know how you, um, you can make the ties instead of using ribbon? And that's what she did here. Let me see if I can make it a little bigger. Will it flip? Maybe it won't. Get it out of that burn. Come on, focus. Doesn't want to focus. There we go. Now you guys can see it. So she's got the shark with the plaid, and then she made her ties to match the interior. That's really cute. So that's an option too, guys. That turned out super cute. I love it. Did you see it, Mary? Do you need me to show you again? Yeah, it turned out super sweet. Oh, 
Okay, good. I just wasn't sure if you did because I know you were trying to get her attention. I was like, did you did you miss? <laughs> oh, cool. So yeah, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, making those ties like that, that is truly an option. So if you don't have um, anything that matches or, you know, you look at your ribbons and you're like, none of those are making me happy. Just, just make those. Oh, are you awake now? Did you have a nice dream? Hmm? Was it a nice dream? Oh, you got stretched. I know. Oh, big yawns. Big yawns. Here, look up here. Tell them how good your dream was. How good was your dream? Yeah. What were you dreaming about? You were barking. What was that all about? Oh, big yawns again. No, you did, but <laughs> I can talk to you from over there. That doesn't mean you have to be right on top of me. It does not. Silly. Yeah, and you have to do that sometimes, Mary. I'm I'm always MacGyvering. So yeah. <laughs> She's a little stinker. She loves when I talk to her, if you can't tell. She just perks up and tilts her head and tries to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, hey, no. And then we got to try and go talk to the cat, don't you? No, the cat doesn't want to talk. He's okay where he's at. Silly girl. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think we've kind of hit all the options on these. I mean, we've gone everywhere from decorative and sweet and dainty with the handkerchiefs, those old decorated handkerchiefs to an everyday one with fun fabrics, maybe a little embroidery on it to kind of a rustic feel to Victorian, to warmth, to, you know, these would even be good. Like at Halloween time, you just do Halloween fabrics, Christmas time, just do Christmas fabrics, you know, things like that too. So these would be fun guys for um, farmer's markets. Tasha was at one this weekend and that's what's making me think about it. So these would be super fast and it would be something that nobody else has at those markets. So that's why I'm starting to think, ooh, yeah, these would be really good for farmer's markets. That if you decide to do one at the last minute, you could just whip a lot of these out in a night. I mean, you could probably pop 20 to 40 of these out in a night if you weren't making if you weren't making these, if you're just using ribbon for these. Um, if you decide to make the ties, it's going to just take you a little bit longer. Just to let you know those that you aren't, aren't familiar with making the ties. So if you ever decide to do some real fast, the, the ties will probably take you as long to make as the whole bonnet, I'm just going to say. So it'll double the time pretty much. But it's it's a great look, though. Ha, there you go, Faye. Too bad Liz isn't on here. I still need her ornament with her face on it that she was teasing me about last week. Where's the pattern, Sarah? Um, there really isn't a pattern. It's two pieces of fabric that are nine by 14. This is for babies three to 12 months. And three pieces of ribbon, 18 inches long. Now I've decided the back ribbon probably needs to be a little bit longer after doing it. That's the pattern. That's it. Yeah, that, that's why I liked this one. I was like, cool. Super easy to get all the stuff. But again, it's in my, the sizes are in the description of this video too. If you guys ever need to go back to that. I'm curious though, that 12 by 12 by 16 or 12 by 18, how much bigger that would be. 
I bet that's about all the bigger you'd have to go for a bigger kid. Yes, two out of a fat quarter. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking too. So if you found some really cute fat quarters that you liked or even on clearance and just wanted to pick up a whole bunch of those to make them up. Even online, they have clearance on fat quarters all the time. What you looking for there? Trouble? Hey, hey, Amber LaRue. Are you looking for trouble? Yes. Are you looking for trouble? Trouble's upstairs. You left trouble upstairs. Yes. She's the one that you're just never going to quite get to snuggle with like you'd like to. And I know. She brings out the murder myths too often, doesn't she? So I have to show you guys this picture. It's so funny. Oh, we'll see you, Shana. So I always talk about my one cat from upstairs. Her name is uh, Aunt Biz Mocha, and she's my newest one from out here that actually ended up not being truly feral. She was domesticated very easily. And so she was sleeping, super cute, sleeping like this. I don't know how that was even comfortable. But I always talk about her and her murder mints because she just constantly has has them out just a little bit. And I don't know why. That's just kind of the way she is. Well, she definitely was showing the murder mint that time. So, look at that. She was sleeping with the one out. And it's just so funny. It's like, well, yep, that murder mint is always ready, isn't it? <laughs> Even when you're sleeping. Yeah, I'm excited. Now I need to make some of these for my cousin because they're out in California. So lots of sun out there. You can see them using these a lot. So what else people got going on this week? Anything, anything exciting for the U.S. It's, and for Canada? It's kind of the week before a holiday, so might be a quiet week, or it might be a week just everybody going crazy trying to get ready for it. I mean, down at least down here, things are fairly well opened now, and so everybody's just out just out. And I can just see it being like that. Fourth of July is probably going to be nuts. If you guys could hit the thumbs up too, that would be really awesome. So now I got to figure out so alongs for the next couple of months. So my slate is clean. I've used up all the ones I had planned. So now I need to go and plan that out. I've only got two weeks to plan at least the next one. <laughs> yeah, Diane, that's a lot to do. That's a lot. But, you know, if you push yourself, you'll be glad you did even though you just kind of feel like you're churning or maybe sitting in neutral and just kind of spinning your wheels, but you really aren't, you know, the, the more you get done and just leave everything in um, draft mode until you're ready to feel like you've got enough to open. Yeah, I know. And a downtime and kill for some downtime. I think that's why I was feeling so overwhelmed too. I was um, thinking about that today and I was like, I haven't had an actual vacation vacation. I'm not meaning like going anywhere vacation, just a vacation, a time away from work where nobody bothered me. I had nothing I had to check on. I had, you know, I could just walk away 
I haven't had one of those in years. And I'm just like, it's really starting to, starting to back up again. <laughs> Yeah, you probably will, Diane, and it's all good. Um, you know, we're all here to answer questions. Just, um, I probably wouldn't post less than 10 when you open your shop. Um, the more, the better. But if you only have 10 ready by the 1st of July, then post those 10. But um, I wouldn't probably do less than that. You, you definitely want at least when you open and it's more probably for you than it is for anybody to give yourself a feeling like, oh, I've got I've got a presence now where if you only put one or two out, at least for me, I always kind of feel like, oh, I worked that hard and I've only got two out there, you know, so try and try and at least for your sake, get a bunch of them together before you do that. And again, the copying and and using the listings to kind of build the other listings from is a really good idea. Um, your shipping, if you set that up once, then if you set up your first listing and add your shipping, you know, tag, get it all completely done, then when you copy and paste that or just copy it, it copies the shipping and everything. You don't have to go and pay attention to that again and set up if you're doing free shipping then obviously size of package and weight does not matter so you can put whatever you want in that for shipping and just leave it be and then concentrate on your tags and your descriptions and your price and getting all that changed on the ones going forward from that so at least it took one thing away for you maybe two of a couple other things are the same so I don't know, you know, it, it can be really overwhelming to try and open an Etsy shop just because of the sure volume of listings you need to do right up front. And then after that, it's not so bad. It's just that very first first push. How's that cake, Anna? He didn't tell us what kind it was. And I think I might be on top of the, the nap problem I was having last week. I'm down to like maybe one or two. Oh, fruitcake. Yum. I bet. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> I just realized you can see her right there. She has some of the cutest expressions on her face when she'll hear something or something catches her attention. She's one of those ooh shiny dogs. Squirrel. <laughs> Always. And I've learned I can't talk to her a whole lot because it hypes her up. And she's already high energy to begin with as I've learned that very quickly. Ruru. Hi, baby girl. Am I talking to you? Hi. You can't see me. Hi. What's going on? She is a good baby. She's just got a lot of energy yet. She's just two, so... Yes, Mary, absolutely. When the, those things are on sale. And then you squirreled. I know. She's a, she is totally ooh shiny squirrel. Yeah. We'll go outside to do her duty. And by the time she's literally walked out the door, we ooh squirreled shinied five times and I constantly have to remind her why we were going outside. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Anna. <laughs> 
well, you know, he has aspirations. <laughs> yeah, I think most kids are that way, Sarah. Yeah, she's, oh, my other dog was, I said my other dog had, um, was attention deficit challenged. Oh, she had nothing compared to this one. <laughs> nothing. I mean, my, could, my previous dog could literally go outside and stop at a blade of grass and sit and sniff the very tip of that blade of grass. And she would do that for five minutes. And I'm like, really? Five minutes? And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. If I would leave her be, she would be sniffing that thing for five minutes. Ugh, yeah, Danny, I think I finally, I think I'm finally on top of it. I mean, I, I threw out all my trash. I did everything because I have no idea where they came from. And I'm, I'm down to maybe I just killed one right before and then I saw another one flying. And I'm hoping I'm on top of it now because, man, last week, whew, that was making me nuts. And it was kind of like fruit fly almost size. And I'm like, where are these guys coming from? I don't have fruit. I don't have nothing down here open. What, what's bringing them in? I don't know. I don't know if maybe they just came in on something. Very possible, I guess. I can't believe how fast those went, guys. I mean, I literally, it was like, I didn't plan on that being so fast. <laughs> That's okay. Kind of fun just to sit and chat with you guys. But if I've known literally it was going to be, I mean, I made the sample right beforehand. I knew it was going to be quick, but I didn't think it was going to be that quick. I would have planned like something else to work on while I was standing here chatting with you guys. So I'll show you guys, um, I'm starting to work on Christmas. And this is the first thing I did. So I'm off just a tiny bit. I thought I centered it. I can fix it. It's not a big deal. All I got to do is just move this one more. And it'll be centered. I mean, I'm literally off by like maybe a half an inch of that. So I can fix it. It's not a big deal. But I was like, I can't believe I'm already doing Christmas. But I have to. Yeah, when they're in the drain, Danny, oh, man. You would think just flushing the drain would do it. But I don't know. They just... They just hang around. I don't get how they are able to survive like that. But they do. It's crazy. So this was kind of a test that I did. And I've got some ideas on how I want to use things like this besides towels. So this kind of gave me, the stitch out gave me an idea of size and colors and things like that. So... And then I bought a pattern for me and I'm like tired of wanting to make myself some new clothes because I've got everything I need. I just need the time. And so I've just decided I'm going to do it. So I bought this pattern. It was yesterday. And at first I was like, oh, I'm just going to do some linen stuff and make a linen top out of this. But the more I started thinking about it, let's see if I find where I put the pattern. Oh, it's on Dropbox. I could see me doing this. For a top out of like older t-shirts. picture here all the way at the top so it's a dress or a top you guys can 
see that? So it's got this cute little peplum skirt and a crisscross back. And then if you look at the front, get a better picture of the front here. A better picture of the front and it's just real fitted but I, I might make it just a touch longer but could you see that being kind of out of a knit and then a graffiti like knit something going on here and just make it a really fun top that you wear with like jeans or jean shorts or whatever rather than a real dressy cotton linen and I was like, wow, this is going to be fun because it looks like it's super easy. The back is either an all elastic back like that, or you can get a little more formal and do a zipper instead. So I kind of liked both options. So now I just need to decide, but uh, I think it would be super fun to do out of even tie-dye knits would be cool. So I don't know. My brain just started going crazy with this today after I bought the pattern yesterday. I started thinking about it. And I was like, I could really make a bunch of those. I've got a bunch of knit over there. And then I wanted like that pink linen that you guys, you can kind of see it. It's like right there that I bought for the girls' tops. And it doesn't use much for a top. So it was saying like maybe three quarters of a yard to a yard for the top, which is nothing. So I've got plenty of that linen. <laughs> this is hard to do. That linen right there, I've got plenty of it to do a top for me and still have plenty for the kids. And then I've got some cool fabrics over here, some cool knits that I bought. Oh, right before everybody shut down. And so... I'm like, this would be cool to do because I've got just a plain gray. So that would be fun, just a plain one. This stuff is so soft. But I have this really fun gold striped one. And it's kind of see-through. So I would, I was thinking maybe if I did this for the straps and maybe the waistband and maybe put it with this gray, that could be kind of fun too. So my brain has just been going crazy thinking about this, or I've got this really nice um, skin tone. It's hard to tell on camera that it's a, a light, like a washed out blush color. And again, super, super soft. So I could even do that with the gray and do kind of a gray and a blush top. So. <laughs> Anna, that's funny. He thinks he's a husky. That's hilarious. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's, he's, he's a pocket puppy. He's so cute. Oh, that would be cute, Mary. That would be really, really cute. Oh, that's okay, Don. Okay, Don, so this is what we made tonight. We're just chatting now. It was actually one of those projects that was over in like 20 minutes, and I tried to drag it out as much as I could, and I just couldn't. So we did baby bonnets. Super easy to 9 by 14 pieces of fabric and some ribbon. That's all it is. So... And these are baby size, so we're kind of talking also about sizes to make them bigger. So that was my sample, and then this is the one that we made while I was on camera. So that's what we that's what we did tonight. So yeah, if you rewatch it, it really won't take long if you wanted to make these. These are super easy. But yeah, I just, I've had these knits just long enough to make this, make something. And I wanted to make just some regular knit tops too. So I've got plenty to do that and make a couple of those and make a dressy one and then maybe make a dress too. It depends upon how well the pattern fits. So I'll do one or two and figure it out. 
And then if that's the case, I might make it really simple, easy, just a summer dress just to wear or a couple of them. I mean, once I get a pattern I really like, sometimes I will figure out how to adjust it just a little bit to just, just to change it up just a tiny bit. They put ruffles also just like right here, a little like a flutter ruffle. So I could do a couple of those, do, you know, do one like that to change it up. Um, they also had a different back on it where it wasn't crisscross, but it was more just kind of a straight back with a keyhole. So that would be another option. But yeah, once you get a pattern and you figure it out, if you can just kind of keep changing it up a little bit, then you, you already know how, how it fits you. But oh, I just, I love this, this knit fabric. It's so soft. I just want to like, I should probably make pajamas out of it. It's that soft. And this was one of those, um, we have a place in San Antonio. It's kind of like a warehouse. And I got to see if they're still there now because they were there before the pandemic. And uh, this is where I got all of this. So you go and they have just bolts and 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 bolts. And, bolts and, bolts. and you just kind of wander through and it's super reasonably priced. I think I got these for like five bucks a yard when I bought them. So yeah, I came home with a ton of knit fabric and thought, oh, I'm going to make all these knit tops that I've got upstairs, just take a pattern from and I haven't done it yet, but I need to. Because a lot of those knit tops, they're, they're the kind where you just wear them to paint in now because you, you've worn them so much. But they still have a great fit and a great cut to them. So I just need to take patterns from them. Oh, you'll do fine tomorrow, Sarah. Yeah, that's nice when you take pants into capris. Sometimes that's all it takes is to just change it up just a little bit. And then all of a sudden you're like, I feel like I have a new piece of clothing, you know? Oh, thanks, Nancy. Yeah, Anna, if you want the link, um, I can send you the link for the pattern. And then um, if you wanted to sew with me, you could. Sarah, here's a pattern for you. Let me let me go grab this. And this is another thing I've had for a while, and I think you can still get them. Still get this pattern. You may have to search a little bit, but it's a McCall's pattern for capris. And look at those. They're just casual, gathered waist. And you make them whatever length you want. If you want to add a drawstring, you can. If you want to add pockets, you can. And it's McCall's 2586. So um, it might be one of those where you have to search maybe eBay or something for it. I don't know if you can still buy it in the store. But, yeah, it's it goes from an extra small to an extra large. So this has been kind of on my wanting to make list as well, just for casual pants to wear, you know, even just around the house. But as hot as it gets here, I was thinking linen would be perfect for these, and then that, that would be nice and cool. Ellie and Mac have some great patterns, Dawn. Yes, they do. In fact, I think Ellie and Mac is one that I use for one of the sew alongs. Yeah. Okay. All right, Sarah. Now they might have it in a plus size, Sarah, just because that's what this one said. That was this line, but they may have one very similar to this. I can't imagine they wouldn't because this is just such a basic Capri pattern. I could see that being easily sizable for anybody. Yeah, Pia, I would, I've always wanted to make a bunch of linen separates for especially down here in the south it's just so much it's kind of half dressy kind of half not a lot more comfy and then that way if i get dressed you know for the day working at home and then i have to run out real quick i don't have to change clothes 
because <laughs> there's a lot of times I have to do that. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, I just got to start changing my wardrobe just enough that what I've got on, if I have to go run errands real quick over lunch or run to a doctor's appointment or something, I literally don't have to stop 15 minutes before I can just run out the door. Because a lot of times my clothes that I would wear out may not be perfect for being at home all day in because I'll either ruin them or they're not super comfortable because of the moving around I do here versus what I would do at the office or something. So, hey, Bear Bear, you're back. I got to put all these up. Oh, and then I've got this other one's really cool too. This white, this one's real see through. So I would have to put something else under it, but you can see it a lot better. It's kind of like a, a burned stripe. So yeah, I'd have to put something under that if I made a top out of this, but I, I love this one. It's so cute, the fabric. Yeah, we can try, and it's not that bad of a pattern. I was looking through it, and it's not that bad. So yeah, guys, it, it, those of you that are liking this pattern of this dress that I'm going to do, or this top, we could easily do an offline, like a group sew, if anybody's interested in doing that too, um, where we maybe do some Zoom, Zoom time and we all just sit and work through this together, whether it be the cutting or the sewing or whatever. So if that's something you're interested in, just let me know and uh, we can look at that. But yeah, Anna, definitely we can even Zoom while, while we work through this and I can walk you through a lot of it. Yeah, we can do a Discord group Zoom. We can do our Zoom. I mean, Discord group meeting, that kind of thing, too. So um, definitely this the pattern that I showed you guys is from a company called Violet Field Threads. So Violet is V-I-O-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Violet Field Threads. And the pattern is Shiloh, S-H-I-L-O-H. And the sizes, it goes up to a size 20. So so yeah, but you can go look at the sizes and stuff on their, on their website because the chart will be on there. Hi, Lakeisha. How are you? You won something too, right? Last week. Did I see your name? On SMP. Am I right? Or am I thinking of something else? I think, Anna, you'll be all right. Maybe your first one might be. And we can work through that. But I think, you know, it's one of those where if you're stretching, just kind of assume your first one's going to be your learning curve. So maybe you do it out of something that's not the final fabric that you want to do the second one out of. You do it maybe out of some old t-shirts or whatever. The dress name is Shiloh, S-H-I-L-O-H. What are you licking? <laughs> what are you licking? All I'm hearing is her licking. Okay, so here's the company. Let's see if I can get it too. Focus. There. Violet Field Threads. And it's Shiloh. So, yeah, if you guys are looking, it's just the girl in the yellow dress. It's going to be probably the image that you'll be seeing. And um, if you go over there and you sign up for their email or their text, I think it's text actually, they have sales all the time. I get a text pretty much every weekend about a sale. Yes, you did win the magnetic pin cushion. Okay, there was three people I knew then. So exciting. I thought there was a bunch of names I saw that was winning. I'm not laughing, Don. Sometimes those, sometimes the PJ pants are made out of fabrics that are perfect for day wear. 
And yeah, you just kind of change it up a little bit. So yeah, um, if you guys want to try, we can do that. And then again, like I was saying, do your first one. If you feel like you're going to be stretching and you're a little nervous, let's do your first one just out of ember, out of um, some fabric that you're not really too crazy about, or you're not, you know, or you would just wear around the house if it turns out eh, and you can still wear it kind of thing. Oh, I know. Yeah, Lakeisha, that's just it. You know, it's kind of hard to be paying attention. And it's hard to watch all the time. I know there's a lot of ones on there, Mary, on their site. There's a long one. And that might be the one you're talking about, the Isla, that looks so comfy. There was a long one that I wanted to try to maxi dress. Let me go see if that's the Isla. They've got some really cute formal dresses on here too. It's just, oh, I wish we had places to wear stuff like that. Okay, yeah, the Shiloh is not very far down on the page when you go to their website and you scroll down. Actually, it's um, the picture that you see is this one. So it's right there. It's in the purple. And it's called the Mommy and Me bundle, but you can buy a bundle or you can buy it as just an adult size or just as a kid's size. And they've got PJs on here and all kinds of stuff. So there's some easy patterns and some that are going to push you a little. Oh, that's too bad, Nancy. Yeah, unfortunately, with some of the kids, they, they have definite strong opinions. <laughs> I was that way as a child, too. Um, let's see. Let me find that Isla. Yeah, I get that, Nancy. Yeah. It's hard to get them away from that. Okay, that Isla is similar to the one that I was looking at. Yeah, that looks really comfy. The one that I was looking at that I kind of wanted to do as well was, oh, the Zoe. I think it's the Zoe. Come on. One, yes, the Zoe, and it would be good for like fall and spring. So it's a maxi with a ruffle, and then just a real easy loose top and three quarter sleeves. It's super, super cute, and you can make it with long sleeves, and you can make it as a short dress as well. I'm trying to see if they show the front a little better. Okay, so here's kind of just in plain what the front looks like for the top. So it would be really, really a comfortable dress. And if you made it out of the right fabric, it could be one of those where you have to, you know, if you have to go to somewhat of a dressy occasion, but you feel like wearing your sweats, <laughs> it could be that dress. And it's like, hey, I'm going to look like a million bucks, but I'm going to feel like I'm wearing sweats. <laughs> Wow, Nancy. Hey, Adiani. Nancy, um, which one are you? The one that I just showed, the Zoe, the longer one, or the one that I want to do the, that I was wondering if people wanted to do kind of so long with me. The Zoe is the one that I want to do eventually that kind of looks like it'd be super casual, but yet dressy at the same time. And then the Shiloh is the one that I'm going to do where I'm going to make tops and maybe a dress. I'm not sure yet. Okay, the Zoe. The bonnet, Ediani, you've got to make these. You have to. Super, super easy. And it's, it's one of those instant gratification kind of projects. So this is the first one I did. I mean, these literally take like 20 minutes. They're crazy. Now that's not cut to finish, but 20 minutes to sew, maybe not even that long, 10 minutes maybe to sew, depending upon how much time 
you just want to mess with it. So this one's out of linen. It says linen inside, linen outside. And then this one's got the cotton inside with a rustic fabric. And this fabric is actually really soft. It doesn't feel like it would be because it's kind of like a, a hux tooth in a way. But it's got a pattern to it. And it's hard for you to see. But can you kind of see that raised thread right there? So it's got texture to it besides just the print. Oh, thanks, Lakeisha. Yeah, they're super easy. So it's a great beginner project. And if you are interested, Lakeisha, just, just replay because we did it kind of, I just kind of took the time. We talked for a little while, so it's probably like the first 30-ish minutes. And we probably really started into it about 15 in. So, yeah, it, you're going to you're going to die, Eddie, Annie. It's so quick. It's so quick. It's just a rectangle kind of sewn together and a ribbon thrown on with some ribbon ties. It's super fast. I know you were wanting to do some bonnets, so. That's OK. It's all right, Eddie, Annie. <laughs> yeah. And Mary made one while we were we were talking too, and she even made the ties instead of using ribbon and to still it was really quick so yeah you can always make the ties out of the same fabric if you want to do that as well yeah i was trying to drag it out and i really was it was one of those where there just wasn't a whole lot of steps it was like quick <laughs> Yeah, that quick. See, Eddie, this is one of those I was telling too that once you've done it like once or twice, and if you wanted a quick add on gift or you wanted like your, you know, how you did your pop up shop, and all of a sudden you, you wanted to do a pop up shop and it's next weekend, you could whip out a ton of these so fast. And I can guarantee nobody would have those because nobody's really thinking about bonnets anymore, but yet people are starting to wear them again. The kids are always going to wear them. You could add ruffles. We talked about that too. You could add a ruffle on there. This is actually a three to 12 month size. So we also talked earlier about if you wanted to size it up for larger kids. I don't, there was not a measurement, but I'm guessing you could probably try maybe a 12 by 18 size fabric instead of a nine by 14. And that might get you probably right where you need to be. Yeah, the ruffle would be an easy add. I would do that at the, you know, you could do several different kind, okay? So you could do one where you put it into the seam here and then it sticks out a little bit. Or you could do the kind where you surge both sides and you you gather it down the middle and then just add it at after you're completely done and sew it onto the front here. So many different ways to do a ruffle. And she was just messing with the cat, if you guys were watching that. She knows she's not supposed to do that. Look at this little stinker. You, stop it. The cat was trying to get up there and make biscuits, and you had to get up there and be silly. Leave him alone. Ember. Oh, she just won't. Leave the kitty alone. He doesn't want to play. He doesn't feel like playing with you. Maybe you need a Tic Tac, and he'd play with you. Is that the deal? You need a tic tac, huh? <laughs> don't. Yeah, she wants to play. Don't, don't. No, we're not going to do that right now. <laughs> yes, you could, Mary. I was trying to keep it really, really simple. But yeah, you wouldn't even have to add a crescent. I, I would think if you wanted to do the stabilizer, all you'd have to add is just one more strip to the front and so I would take another rectangle and fold it in half and put the stabilizer in the middle and then you just sew it onto this part and make it a part of the bonnet oh I wondered if you were at work Eddie thanks for dropping in real quick glad we got to talk to you for a second and we've got five days guys till we know for sure 
Ediani's doing a reveal on the 25th. I'm excited. I think we all kind of have our our idea of what you're having. So we'll see if everybody's thinking the same thing or not. I keep playing with this knit. It is so soft. Maybe that's what, something I need to concentrate on this week too. Just kind of make myself some shirts. Because every time I go to pull out a knit shirt, I think about this stuff down here. And I'm like, when am I going to do this? Because I can't wait to wear these. And the minute I get these done, I'm going to be like, why did you wait? Because <laughs> I know it's going to take me longer to cut them out than it is to sew them together. Because I know they're going to surge up super fast. Because I'm just doing a simple scoop neck tee. So it'll be a side seam, two shoulder seams. I'm going to surge the edge here. I'm not even going to finish it. I just want to surge it and then put in sleeves and decide if I want to just surge the edge there too. And I'll surge the bottom. I mean, it could be like that. Take no time. So did everybody see anything else on here? I wasn't, I was looking, but I wasn't looking. You know, and the fun thing about these patterns is if you wanted to do a mommy and me dress for you girls, after you've done one, and you could even do the, you, the, the little girl's dress before you did yours, then, um, that would be a good sample to make. I like the June dress as well. And I like the back of it. I'm all about um, the really pretty backs with the simple fronts. So here's uh, the back of that one. And it's really interesting. Isn't that pretty? And the front is just real simple. It's just a... You wouldn't even know you got a party going on in the back. So it's just a simple front. And you wouldn't even have to put the pockets on. And even if you wanted the, the back, you could just be plain, I guess, on this one too. So it's just a real basic dress. But sometimes those basic dresses are the prettiest dresses you can own. And you'll wear them for ever can you tell i'm getting tired of my clothes <laughs> i'm like okay i've got how much fabric i just need to sew oh and that's cute too the Emmeline is really pretty. It's a maxi dress with a halter top and then a simple little add-on ruffle right here on the scoop neck. And the waist is like more up here. Okay, Lakeisha, I'm glad you stopped by. Yeah, your videos, you're doing awesome with your videos. So keep going, girl. Yeah, that's where I'm at, Sarah. I'm kind of, I've just looked at some of this stuff for so long. And then I start looking at this other and I'm like, it's just too easy just to put on a dress. And if I would had some more that I was excited to wear, I would just do it. And even these longer dresses, I would wear them because here's that Emma line right here. Look how comfortable that would be. And see, it's just a long dress. It's just simple. And you wouldn't even have to put the ruffle on if you didn't want to. And it's a halter back. So super easy. But considering I'm not a morning person, for me to just get up and throw the dress on and I'm already... Got to just put shoes on. 
we're good. <laughs> All right. Good night, Lakeisha. Oh, I get it, Sarah. Yeah. No, I totally understand. And I agree with you. I, they need to revamp all that because they just, and, you know, they've been saying that for how long and they still haven't really done it. I don't understand that. Oh, the cool thing about this too, guys, on this website, they have coloring sheets you can download for free. So if your kids want to color, look at that. That's a coloring sheet you can download and just print right from their website. And they've got them, I think, for all of them. So if you've got a little girl that likes to just do stuff like that, that's really awesome. That's, that's where I'm at, Mary. When I don't feel like being dressed and I put on a dress, then at least... I feel like I got dressed quickly and I feel comfortable and it's not sweats. <laughs> I'm sure people get tired of me constantly being in my yoga pants and a t-shirt or a tank top. Can I get you anything? Are you sure you're comfy enough? Huh? Do you need me to fluff that couch for you a little more? She's back there with her legs up against the back so her feet are sticking up. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I can see that, Sarah. Anytime we feel we wear clothes that we don't like or we're not happy about, it tends to make you feel icky. And that's for anybody. Yep. I'm I'm with you, Mary. We need to we need to help her make some stuff and we can easily do that. We got everybody around here that can help do that. Yep. Definitely, Dawn. And then you can also wear those into the fall and just throw on like either a sweater or a jean jacket or something. And you're still wearing them and they look different because it's now got a, another layer on it. Because even the one that I've got on right now, I'll put um, I'll put leggings with it sometimes. I'll put a black pair of leggings on and then it looks completely different yet yeah, because it's kind of like a tunic dress or a tunic top at that time. I didn't realize this one they had as a maxi as well. I'm really all about the maxi dresses. They're just, oh, they feel so good to wear. And then I also don't have to worry about if I've shaved my legs. <laughs> oh. Yes, you can do that as well, Don. Yep, there's so many ways. Of, even just a regular long sleeve t-shirt will work. You know, if you have one of those longer plain colored t-shirts, I've seen a lot of people do that. Changes up the look so much. <laughs> Nancy, you squirreled again. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maxi dresses, definitely, Dawn. And maxi dresses are never really out of style. They used to kind of go in and out and in and out. Now they're just in no matter when. People wear them all the time because they're comfortable. And, yeah, they hide a whole lot of things. All I know is, too, my legs are so dry that if I run out the door and I don't have time to even put on lotion on my legs, they look, oh, it looks so bad. So I'm like, yeah, just throw on a long dress and you don't have to worry about that. Now I'm super motivated to just revamp my wardrobe. They even have a pattern here that's either a tunic or a nightgown. So it's a very universal pattern. It's really sweet. Um, it's like a swing tunic. 
and it comes with sleeves or without. So either way, so this is the nightgown version and this one's sleeveless, but you, they've got sleeves as well. So it's just like those A-line swing tunics. So they're super easy to do. So that's the, uh, the nightgown, but the dress, I mean, look at the dress. It's just, just as cute. She just made it completely out of knit with probably got two seams, two side seams, pulls over the neck. And then you just have everything and you're done. It's just one of those real simple swing tunics that are so comfy. And you can easily make this any length that you want without it even being the pattern to do it. You just lengthen it and just keep the line going out. And if it gets a little too flared, you can pull it in just a little bit. So you'd always start at your underneath your arm where that seam starts like right there. And your flare goes from there. So if you're making it real long and you don't want it to get, if it's a, one of those bigger tunics and you want to pull it in, then you can just follow the pattern and take your ruler. So say like, we're starting at my armpit and it normally goes like this on the pattern, then you just pull it in. And then that takes the flare out of it if you want to make it longer. Because some of those longer ones, if you keep going at the length that the shorter tunic is, it's going to be way out. And it's going to be almost like one of those really big ball gowns. And you don't want that much fabric. Or maybe you do. You know, it just depends upon the look you're going for. Yep. You could do that, Dawn. Absolutely. Good question, Mary. What, Sarah, what would you, your perfect outfit be? <laughs> Nancy, I've had to give up flip-flops. I have to be really careful because I think I ruined my feet wearing those really cheap flip-flops for way too much time over the last couple of years. And they, you know, they were pretty broken down and I didn't realize it until my feet were just, oh, they hurt so bad. And I've never had that before. So I've just kind of quit wearing them and I actually made myself throw them out. And then on top of it, going down my steps, I, if they were just a little bit wet, I would fall every single time I'd, I'd hit like one step and my feet would go out from underneath me because of those stinking flip flops. So I threw them all out and I have to, I have to wear a different kind of flip flop now. So I, I, I it killed me to throw those out. I loved those things, but oh, for two bucks, you know, you can wear them and throw them out. Capri's and a cute top. Oh, a flutter sleeve would be really pretty, Sarah. Yeah. Flutter sleeves are so easy, too. You just take your sleeveless and then you can... You can any sleeveless pattern and add a flutter sleeve to it real easily. Yeah, and see, I've just learned, Nancy, I, I know what I can't buy anymore for flip-flops and what I can. So I had to learn the hard way, not only by hurting my feet, but by falling on the steps. And I was just like, yeah, I just got to be done. And I've thought about getting some Burks. I really have, Michelle. I need to go try them on because I'm kind of in an in-between size. And I'm afraid if I don't go try them on somewhere, I may get the wrong size. I've always kind of just got, yeah, and I think that's what I got, Sarah. I really think that's what happened because it took months and months for my feet to recover. So I learned painfully don't do that anymore and i actually i wear the um a couple of years ago remember when the yoga mat sandals were in and then it has the the fabric that goes around your foot and you know they're kind of like the flip-flop but you know what i'm talking about and i bought a couple of pairs of those when those were really popular and i still wear those around home because they're very comfortable and I think that's what helped me get past all of that. And I just had to remind myself throughout the flip flops, 
wear your yoga mat sandals around home. And then I have a lot of the extra mats that I stand on down here because this is a concrete floor. And I know it was the flip flops in this concrete floor too that did it. So I've just had to kind of <laughs> quit being so silly and just do what you're supposed to do. Good question, Mary. Yeah. What length do you like your shirts to be, Sarah? Yeah, I agree, Michelle. That's why I was like, I've seen some really good deals online where I could pick some up on sale, but I didn't know what size because they, I literally, I'm a half size a lot of times in these sandals. Yeah. And then at work, if I'm on site, I have to wear work boots and they're comfortable, but I probably not the best for my feet. They're better than flip flops. So I've had to be in those quite a bit lately. Thankfully, I was worried that this was going to flare up again and it didn't. It just ruined my back, but you know, no big deal <laughs> running around on concrete and work boots. Thankfully, I don't have to do it very often. So I would have to go get some really good insoles if I had to be in my work boots all the time. But the little tiny bit that I wear them, it's not my feet don't hurt. It's more my back. And I know it's just from walking around on concrete. It's not from the boots. Mid hip length. Yeah, that might be about right, Dawn. Sarah, you agree? Shirts at mid hip length. Yes, the Timberlands are nice. Um, my work boots are a good brand, a really, really good brand. And so that's why I'm not so worried about my boots. It's just I can't control the surface I'm walking on and spending. I mean, when I'm out on site, I'll be literally on my feet for probably eight hours on the concrete. And it's just the literally being on the concrete. Yeah, I made sure I bought good boots. That's the one thing my dad taught me from the time we were very small. He goes, you do not buy cheap boots. You will ruin your feet if you buy cheap boots. And so whenever we would get cowboy boots or work boots, he taught me, you know, you, you pay just a little bit extra. They last longer and then you will not ruin your feet. So I can, every time I go shop for boots, I can hear it in my ear. Don't buy cheap boots. <laughs> I've heard that too, Don. There's a lot of them out there anymore. And there, um, some of these brands are really, even Crocs are starting to make some decent looking sandals. And I know Crocs are good for your feet too. So, you know, I think there's still more of like a beach sandal that they make, but still, you know, just for every day running around. Yeah, you do. You pay for that. And I've had my boots. Granted, I don't wear them as heavily as if I was on site, like full time, but I've had my boots for probably 10 years. They do look like I've worn them, but they do not feel like they're worn out. They still feel supportive and everything. So it was worth it. Yes, Michelle, they do. And there's another brand out there as well that I've been getting notifications from that do that. Um, and if I ever have to replace my boots because mine have to be steel toed i may look into those because they they look like um they have a tennis shoe that is a decent looking kind of shoe and then they have a like just a regular shoe and for girls it's harder to find a steel toed shoe boot that looks decent they usually don't look good at all and the ones that i found look really good really really good and it was just because of the brand that I, I was buying from. I bought an Ariat and I love my Ariat boots. And everybody that's out on site that has Ariat loves them as well because they're super comfortable. And the boots actually looked good because every other boot that I found that was a woman's boot, I was like, who is designing this? Because, ew, 
No. <laughs> Hey, Joanna. Thank you. Yeah, this is one of my favorite colors to wear and I don't have enough of it. I need to buy some more of this color. Yeah, Mary, my Ariats, they were like slippers when I bought them and I literally had no break in time. I put them on and I hit the ground and I was afraid that, you know, you're gonna have just a little bit of a blister for the first time, nothing. I, I wore those all the time and now I'm just like, oh, I will, I will definitely buy Ariats again. Oh, I agree. I like that, Don. I like that. I think that's a really good idea. Sarah, what would you think of that? I think that'd be really cute. Oh man, Michelle, that's why you had to buy them. That's really kind of sad. That's horrible, but at least you were smart enough to, to know. Yep. And that's it. If the, Nowadays, you don't know if they're steel toed or not. Yeah. The only thing I hate is in the wintertime. Ooh, those babies get cold. <laughs> that extra steel plate in there. Your feet are cold to begin with. And whoa. <laughs> Sarah, I might, I might do a little research on that for you too. I'm, I think I have come across some that I've, when I was searching, I need to go and look and see. Oh. Really? Goofball. <laughs> and she's got such a pink belly, too. Yeah, it does, Michelle. I, I had found a combination when I was when I was up north when I was growing up, because you know, you had to deal with that all the time, especially when snow skin all the time. I actually had a pair of silk socks that I would put on and then put another thinner, like a cotton over it. It actually worked pretty good because the silk helped wick any perspiration if you did have any away, but it also kind of helped keep that barrier layer in. So, yeah. And then any wool socks I wore, they were too thick actually for my, by the time I put the, two pairs on. So I always had to keep it thinner and they ended up being cotton every time, but it still worked. I wanted wool. I just didn't have any thin wool socks. Baby alpaca socks are awesome, Pia. Yeah. Now there's more options about that. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't knit socks at the time where if I would knit socks, I could have had a pair or two and I would have probably totally been all about it. And the mittens, yes. And I actually have um, made um, a scarf. So it's actually a shawl, but I wear it like a scarf out of the baby alpaca too. It's so wonderful. It feels so good. It's, so, it's kind of one of those um, really soft, squishy ones. They're so awesome. Yeah, now there are so many that aren't as bulky, I agree. Okay. This is hilarious. The minute I move the camera, you're going to move yourself. You think she could get any comfier? I mean, really? Can I get you anything? Little queen? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Girl, you're silly. 
<laughs> she loves that couch, if you can't tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she is so silly. Uh, no, that's the kitties. You don't get this one. This one's yours. Here's yours. This one belongs to the cat. She is living her best life, Sandy. And if I don't watch her, this is the only toy the cat will play with. And I've given the cat a ton of them. And it's the only one he likes. So she will destroy this thing if I even let her have it. Because she loves to pull the stuffing out of things. And she's got toys down here. She just finds the cat toys because, you know, they're not hers. <laughs> kind of like a kid, you know. They always want what's not theirs. Oh, man. I might make pajamas out of this. I need some summer pajamas really bad. I've only got, like, one pair of shorts that I wear. And I love them, so I just need to copy that pattern. They're super comfy. I just wonder if this would be too lightweight for them. Might be. This would be a good summer top then for sleeping in. Make some tanks out of this. I have to find a little heavier knit for those shorts. Ah, I gotta see the cake, Anna. Yeah, I know. They love hair ties. Totally. All about them. Oh, Ashley just made me hungry. Oh, that looks so good. Anna, that cake looks amazing. Oh, wow. That is so cool. So pretty. Mm, you guys are making me hungry. I can't look at that 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 section. It'll make me want to eat. <laughs> yeah, I've put my hair ties away upstairs because the cats will definitely find them. <laughs> She's investigating. Where's your, did I bring your treats upstairs? Or did, I don't know, down here. Where's your treats? Oh, there they are. Here. I know these are probably not your favorite because you, every time I give these to you, you kind of just look at me like, really? You're going to eat that one? I thought you are going to make wire out of me, aren't you? Because you're going to eat them. You want one more? My previous dog would not eat a treat unless I gave her two. If I gave her one, she'd sit there until I gave her another one. She would not eat it. She'd hold it in her mouth and just keep looking at me like, I know they're supposed to come in two. And I don't know where she got that because I never used to give them to her in twos. It's like right after I got her, she must have learned that from her previous home because she was a year old when I got her. And I finally figured out, because I was like, go eat your treat. She's just looking at me. Like, go eat your treat. And she just wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. And I finally she gave her another one. Then she trotted off. And I was like, uh-huh, they have to come in pairs. So she's kind of that way, too. I, I agree, Michelle. I agree. And it looks so wonderful, doesn't it? It looks so, so good. Oh, you are eating them. Okay, there you go. Yeah, you're going to make a liar out of me. That's okay. Yeah, I agree. That's what I was thinking too, Sandy. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's okay though, Lakeisha. That's all right. Here you go. 
I've had to make her sleep in her kennel for like the last week and she's not happy with me. So I'm making up with her. But yeah, poor baby. So yeah, I gotta start um figuring out you guys' next things here. I just need to get out on the web again. I find so many ideas to teach you guys just by playing around on the internet. And it's like, wow, why didn't I think of that? Oh yeah, that's a great idea. So I need to get out there and do that again. I know, don't feel too bad for her, Michelle. She's okay. <laughs> her kennel's pretty sweet. It's really big. She can run around in it. She can jump in it. She can play it. I mean, it's huge. It just keeps her contained. That's all it does. It keeps her from moving around. I tried to let her run the house and I put up a baby gate so she could get into my bedroom because I can't, I can't close the doors. I, I could, but the cats have bigger hissy fits when I close the doors and I will not sleep. They'll just sit there and thump, 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 till I open the door. So I, I, I put up a baby gate and I was like, well, you can, you know, go sleep on the couch if you want. I don't care. You can run the whole house. No, she laid right by the baby gate and then she'd get up and pace and then lay down and then pace and lay down. And then I was like, you're as bad as the cats with the closed door. You're not going to let me sleep. So... You just have to go up into your kennel, which is in her own bedroom. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. But when I put her up there, then my boy cat, he has a pillow that lays on top of her kennel because it's just a wire pen. And then I took and put one of the, you build it. And I had to put like one or two of the side pieces, make it just a little bit smaller on top to create an actual closure because she will climb out. And I was doing that when she was littler because I didn't, I didn't trust her yet to be potty trained. So when I would leave, she would climb out. And so I had to keep her contained. Well, I would then put, I put a pillow on top and my boy cat upstairs would go lay on the pillow and keep her company the whole time. He's such a sweet boy. He will, he just, you know, the minute I did that, he assumed the position up there and then he would look down on her every now and then, make sure she's okay and he'd sleep and he'd get up and he'd go check on her again and go back to sleep. Oh, he's so cute. I know I'm a softie on it too, Michelle, but for right now, she's, she's needing to be back there again. She's kind of, um, we're, we're getting to the end of the puppyhood and a lot of times some people are lucky where the puppy, when the puppy is good, the puppy stays good. I've got one that kind of does this and she does really good. And then all of a sudden she'll forget. And it's not so much that she makes messes as she gets into some things and forgets I'm not supposed to be there and then she'll destroy it. So, and it's not big things. It's like the cat dishes. She'll just totally destroy them. And I'm more worried she's going to ingest it than the fact that she's destroying it. I don't care that she's destroying it, but I don't want her to eat it and get it inside of her. And so I'm, I'm like, we're doing good, but for some reason, you got up in the middle of the night and did that. So she has to go back in her crate and just, and, and she may have to always be there to some point. Some dogs, you just, that's where they want to be. That's their safety zone. She even sleeps and it's not even a crate. Like I said, it's a, it's like a pen. It stands like this tall and it's huge. It takes up half the room. She'll sleep in it all day long. That's where she wants to be. So it's her security. They Sometimes they have, they return back to that for their security. My other dog did. She was a smaller dog, and so she just had the kennel, but it was huge for her. And I'd leave the, the door open, and she'd go in there and sleep all day long. And even if I forget to put her in there, when I'd leave, when, we first, when I first got her, I'd come home, and she'd be sitting in there, and the door would be open. She'd be looking at me like, 
you forget something? Like, this is where I'm supposed to be. You didn't put me in here and close the door. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, most of the time she'll go in on her own because all I have to do is say kennel up and she just runs right on up there. Or even if I walk up the steps, she'll run up and just sit in there. So, yeah, she doesn't mind it too bad, but she likes to sleep with me too. Yeah, it, it can be if you do it the wrong way, Sarah, but it's some dogs, that's their security. You know, they, they love it. Yeah, they... They actually sometimes that takes away if they have like anxiety or something, it'll take it away because that's their safe place. <laughs> Bad cave, that's funny. <laughs> but yeah, the cats will go up and even just lay up on the floor by her or on the bed while she's up there too. So she's never alone. She's always got a buddy or two with her and then she's got her chew bone in there and she's still got, um, I still keep these um, washable puppy pee pads. I leave those on the floor. Well, I've got, I've still got a real heavy um, rubber mill sheet that I put down while she was still getting trained. And then I put the washable puppy pee pads on there. And then that way if she peed even and missed it, it was still on the rubber and it didn't get on the floor. And so we've still, I've still got all that set up and she takes the puppy pee pads and she gets them into these little like nests and then she'll pop on them like they're a blanket. And so she's, she's got it down. I hear her up there and I hear rearranging everything. And I was like, Oh man, you sound like you're coming through the roof, but yeah. Uh, you know, Nancy, I think that's one of those where you either make it or you don't kind of things, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's tough. Those those kind of things, whenever you're doing anything kind of like on an uh, on an, uh, kind of an auction kind of thing, that's tough. Yeah, I've always shied away from that stuff because a lot of people don't understand. First of all, fabric alone is going to cost more than the dollar, you know, and then the time you took to make it on top of it. Not that you're asking for like lots of money, but come on, even five bucks would be better than a dollar, you know, so. Oh, maybe that's why, because it's got the one dollar in the name. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe, is there other places that do that? And maybe they don't have that kind of a, a name. So that's not a thought process when people go in. Because if it's, uh, if people are going in with that thought process, so they're going to get things for like a buck then you're already kind of defeated before they even get in there because that, that's where they're thinking already. Okay, so maybe you get wise about what you post don't post things that take a lot of fabric maybe. So you keep it to the smaller stuff that you can whip out fast and uses very little and use that to pull him over and that kind of a thought process. You could even do these because they're quick and nothing, you know?
I'm going to look at that too, Mary. <laughs> Oh, and it is two S's. So she didn't um, she didn't do a typo. Oh, and you know what? These patterns are European patterns, so their sizes are better. That's the one thing I found. European sizes are better and truer. And so anytime I go to buy a pattern, if it's from a shop in Europe, I know I'm going to love it already. That's why I like those Odebrecht patterns because they're European and those sizes are spot on. Michelle. Yep, exactly, Mary. That's what I was thinking. Um, just kind of like a hook in a way to interest them. Yeah, totally. I think my camera's a little blurry. I touched it when I moved there. That's better. I did. I think I put my finger on it. <laughs> okay, there you go, Sarah. That's a great idea because sometimes when you do that, maybe the pattern isn't quite there, but we can make it happen. It's so easy, you know, me and my mashups. I'm all about the mashups, putting patterns together to get what you want because you can't find that exact one that has it all, you know? I do that all the time. In fact, the one that I was talking about, this dress I was talking about, I was shocked that I wasn't having to go in and change anything. So I was like, it's got everything the way I like it, you know? Okay, see ya, Anna. Thanks for joining. I'll, um, if you, I'll send you a link to this again if you didn't see it or weren't able to find it. Don, is that the my site that I was the one that I was talking about? I 
I landed on a picture where this girl's got a coffee mug that has a scorpion on it. And I just can't, every time I look at the picture, all I see is that scorpion. And I'm like, oh, I could never, I could never own a cup that has a scorpion on it. And we've got scorpions here. And that's why I'm like, oh, that's the bane of my existence. That and spiders. Oh, and the sewing times. Okay. Yeah, because I was on that one too. Yeah, she had quite a vast size range on her patterns, which is really good. I know I have seen some really cute patterns out there and I cannot think right now oh that was a good kind of visual change yeah it's um there's a word for that and my brain I'm just brain dead tonight and but yeah that's that was good that they did that there you go, Sarah. I didn't think about that. Just sketch it. Yeah, I'm finding, I'm finding quite a few sites. Now, I'm not saying that they've got fabulous stuff yet, but I'm finding some thoughts, some things here. When you just um, Google it, sorry, my contact is bothering me. Sorry, you had another cat toy. <laughs> well, that probably wouldn't be that hard, Sarah, because you take the pattern off of that, and then at least you've got the pattern, and then you go from there. Because a lot of times the changes you want aren't as drastic as you think. It's more making sure that you're getting the fit and if you've got something that you like the way it fits, then that's half the battle right there. And that's for anybody. I know some of, Michelle, some of those dresses like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They're beautiful. People don't look at actual lines of the clothes sometimes from the older days and you realize it's still very relevant today, just a, a newer fabric. Yeah.
Yep, that's what I'm doing, Michelle, is um, when I was talking about making those knit shirts, I have two upstairs that are getting to look really ratty, but I love the cut and the fit, and they probably have fit me the best out of any knit top I've bought, and I think they've just maybe got everything just right. I mean, right down to the sleeve and the length and the whole bit. It was just like, for some I put it on, I was like, whoa, this thing fits like it was made for me. And it was like a cheap top that I bought somewhere. So I need to take a pattern from that and at least keep it and try and make another one and see if I get the same fit out of it. But I really need to take that one completely inside out and look and see. So I get the seams the right size. I mean, it really matters. All of that matters. You got to make sure you get everything completely the same. So I got to look at my seam allowances and make sure I'm hitting that spot on too. And you may not even have to rip the seams. A lot of times those shirts, if you just lay them down, you can fold them, you can open them and fold them enough to be able to trace the pattern without ripping them apart if you really don't want to rip them apart, unless they've got like, you know, funky like arms or something that's keeping you from doing it. I would probably take the sleeves out so that you can get the curve here right if it's if it's a little harder to get but there's a there's a couple of um places i found on here i want to look at them a little closer so there might be a few options just for general for you to look at Now I want to tie a knot and yeah, bow in these and hang them up on my wall. I might do that because I still have that picture in my mind. I've seen them done in the past where they put up those like those three pegs that are on a piece of wood and then you just hang things from it. And I'm like, I just think that would be so cute. Oh, OK. Can I show this, Sarah? Can I show your sketch? That's really cute. Can I show this sketch so that they see, they know what you're looking for? Okay. This is what she's, what she's liking. And then she's talking about the kimono sleeve as well. Yeah, that's very flattering. I like those cuts. That's flattering for anybody. Really cute. Okay, that helps because now when I was looking at some of these um, patterns just a minute ago on this one site, that gives me something to go off of. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's actually a very common shape but it's so flattering on everybody. That's what I love about that one. And I didn't even think about that, but yeah, absolutely. Cause anytime you can get more of a princess up here, that just makes everybody look really good. And then this kind of thing going on and then the flutter sleeves and just a little bit of a flare right here looks so good. Yep. On pair waist is just, that looks good on everybody. I think that's why I like a lot of those maxi dresses because they have a take off of that the on pair waist. It may not be a total on pair, but it that higher. And then it also nothing's cutting you down here in the summertime. You know, it's all sitting right here and everything else just flows.
Yeah, so true, Don. And you get lost with the color blocking. You're not able to see the lines at the top and realize that that's a really cool shape. Yep, true, Michelle. I think if you uh, just built your wardrobe on that on pair waist kind of feel, I think a lot of what you're saying there, Sarah, would be taken care of. And then you can just change up everything. Like Michelle was saying, you just change it from here up. And so you can do so many different things up here that people don't realize that it's still kind of that on pair waist feel. And you feel like you're, you can use the same pattern but yet then you bring another pattern in to change this top part. You make longer sleeves for like in the, in the fall and the winter too, as well. Most people when they are on like um, interviewed on either shows or blogs or magazines or whatever about style and how you can do a wardrobe with minimal pieces. That's one of the things they talk about too, is you just stick with a fit that you know, that looks good on you, that works for you. And then you just stay obviously with basic colors that, that we're not going to go about the colors. We're just going to talk about the style part. And so you find things that are very flattering to you and you stay there. And so anytime you go shopping, whether, and for us, it wouldn't necessarily be shopping and be sewing, but you go shopping for a new piece, you already know what looks good on you. So it eliminates 90% of everything. And then you just go instantly to, oh, it's got, this has got this line to it or that line to it. And that I know always works for me. And so you find those, your eye goes to those no matter what. So I think that's kind of where we all need to do that, not just certain people. We find pieces that always look good on us and we get a lot of compliments on and kind of visit that piece as to what were the compliments I was getting from people? Was it just the color? Was it the style? Was it the way it fits me? Any of that. Maybe it's just the neckline versus like you're saying, Michelle, the different necklines. And maybe it was the neckline. Maybe it was the fact like on this, it has more of mine's got a racer back. And I love the racer back because I don't have shoulders. And so if I wear anything that has even tank tops that has straps, they tend to fall down my shoulders. So I've started wearing the racer back. And I don't have that problem anymore. Otherwise, I'm constantly walking around pulling my stuff back up on my shoulders. And I cannot carry a purse to save my life because I really, it, you don't notice it until you start dealing with stuff like this. It falls off my shoulder all the time because I just don't have, I need probably like maybe another inch, literally right there. And I'll go put jackets on and the jacket, and this is how I figured it out, the actual sleeve part starts like it'll land like right here on me and that's why i'm like i don't have any shoulders and because it really should be more up here so that's that's just um little things i figured out for me that i've got to pay attention to is i've got to, i've got to pay attention to the way this plays on me and then i pay attention to a few other things as well we're not going to talk about those <laughs> but that's the one thing where i've I've learned when I go shopping, I've already eliminated a bunch of stuff because I know it's going to just literally droop.
Yeah, and Michelle, the pads were my best friend. I didn't wear them that often, but when I did, I could keep a bag on my shoulder. <laughs> it was the oddest thing. Who knew? And that was kind of when I was starting to figure out, oh, I just uh, my shoulders are just a teeny bit not wide enough or something or whatever you want to call it. And all those things, I was like, hmm, well, there was a thing for shoulder pads at that day. Yeah, that was that was the thing I liked them for. <laughs> well, now, Sarah, that we know what you like, that helps. Then there's going to be more eyes looking for patterns, and we'll try and find simple patterns, very, very simple ones. Maybe we can find some that, like, we can do the mashups with where – this is this pattern has pretty much everything but it also has the ability to change like from here up and then this pattern we just like the here up not the here down and we're able to take that piece and try and put it over into this pattern and make it all change up still so the mashups are real easy you've just got to find the patterns that kind of have the ability to be mashed up if that makes any sense so once um and that's something that i'm gonna also i need to work on it a little bit because i i want to teach you guys how to do that those of you that haven't sewn enough it, it opens up a whole new world for you where you feel like i'm not finding anything i like well you have to worry about it you find a couple of patterns that you like elements out of and then you put them together. And the minute you've done one or two of those and you realize it's it's a, just a matter of figuring out, does this pattern have this because it needs to have this to fit into this pattern or vice versa. Once you figure out all how that works, it's it's so easy. It's so easy. And it's, it's easy to actually kind of make if the pattern is super close to having what it needs, but it's not 100% there, you can make it work too. So I'm just saying, um, you don't have to necessarily know how to draft patterns. This is the easy way around now. Yeah, it's still very limiting, but it's better than having to know how to draft a pattern. And it does open up a whole nother element for you. Yeah, squarish necks are good for a lot of people as well as the V-necks. It's, it's all in where it draws your eye and it's just flattering no matter what size you are because this is a simple V-neck. It's a, a kind of a, a rounded V-neck and it's just flattering to here. And that's why girls, a lot of women's clothes have that because it focuses on a very beautiful part of the body which is your chest and your neck and then you can wear a really pretty piece of jewelry there and you can look like a million bucks and the rest of your dress could just be or your top or whatever just be a very simple structure and since this is where the focus is going it can be dressed up dressed down whatever and it, you're going to look amazing. And then the square neck is the same way because that square still has your eye focusing here. And that is where we want everybody's eyes to go is more up here and then it leads to your face. And it kind of, you know, because anytime, it doesn't matter what size you are, anytime you're focused away from the face and the upper part up here on the body, it's not, it just doesn't really carry as well and so yeah it's you've got it yes and that's exactly right don and that's where the mashup I'm, and i'm going to teach you guys how to do that that's the easy part is to change this and then there'll be times where we can change a sleeve and a couple of other elements as well. I do it a lot on the kids' clothing, and I've done it on mine as well. We don't have probably as many options as you have with kids' stuff because kids just have a whole lot of stuff going on on clothes that adults just don't have. So, yeah, you have a lot more you can do, but, you know, we can add pockets, take pockets out, um, change your neck, change your sleeve, change 
you know, is this in or out? Um, is it up or down? You know, things like that. Does it flare? Does it go straight? Where the kids were adding bows, we're adding gatherings, we're adding all kinds of funky stuff. And so there's a whole lot more to do with that. It's a lot fun. Yeah. But it's a lot easier to, because it's embellishment esque kind of with their patterns where with ours, it's purely structure. And so that's where we've got to be, you know, it's confining, but not. And so when I show you some of this stuff on how to do it, it'll make sense to you too. It's just a matter of matching up lines of your pattern and lines of another pattern, making sure everything kind of somewhat plays together nicely. So yes, Sarah, and that's where a lot of people have taken to sewing is they either have a funky style that they can't find out there. They have some elements that are a little harder to buy ready to wear. And I had that growing up. I mom made most of my clothes just because I couldn't find anything to fit me in the store. And she would always have to alter it regardless. I mean, I was short. I had just, just weird things that I wasn't, you know, the normal kid size. A lot of times, you know, you go in and things are supposed to, they, they thought girls were supposed to be like straight up and down and I wasn't straight up and down and, you know, just, just stupid stuff like that. So it's very, that, that kind of makes you have to sew. And then if you enjoy it, then all of a sudden you're like, why don't I just do this and make my life so much easier? I can, I'm happy with what I've got. I can see something that I want to wear and I'm not gonna be able to find it out in the store, but I can make it. And I just got to find the patterns to support what I saw easy enough. So yeah. Plus then you get to stay at home. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm such a homebody. It is so bad. And then all this pandemic has made it so, I loved staying at home and everybody else I know was going crazy, but I was just like, I'm a homebody. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. And then there's Bear Bear. Then there's Bear Bear. All you do is wear fur all the time. So we, you don't have these problems. Do you, buddy? He goes, everything fits me perfect all the time. Good boy. All right, guys, it's getting to be that time of night. My sweet boy. I'm hearing a noise. Oh, fireworks are starting. Okay, I do have to go now. Uh, it's that time of night anyway. And now I told you guys the fireworks are going to start. She's going to freak out and you guys aren't going to want to hear this. So she's already freaking out. So I better go, guys. And I will see you guys next Sunday night. So, yep, she's starting. So I got to go. We'll see you later. Bye, guys.